Hi guys, and if you watched one of our previous videos, we built up, not one of these, we built up the Team X-Ray, the new XB2. Had some good results with it, but the Associated brought out the new B6.4. It's not been out too long, so we thought, well, hell, let's get one of these and see what one of these is like. Never had an Associated car before, never raced one. New features on it. Um, well, it's got new big bore shocks, which is one of the biggest changes. It's got a slightly different chassis on it, which gives some um, different length and different kick up for the front. And there's a couple of other things with the cast blocks and things. So this is the uh, carpet kit. They do a dirt kit, which has a slightly different chassis on it and also has the ball diff. Now we are actually going to get hold of a ball diff and probably run a slightly shorter chassis at some point. But let's uh, dig in here and see what we've got. Now we'll do a mega build video on this. We will put chapters on it so you can see, you know, each stage of what we've done the build. We've got over here our toolkit, which I think is everything we're going to need. We've got the server we're going to put in it, ESC, and that will go in later. 3D printer tool stand. So if you want one of those, drop us a message, find us on Facebook. We've got an eBay store as well. So let's dig in and see what we've got. So there's a manual that we'll be working to. Body shell, come back to that later. Well, don't need to go through all these bags now. Let's just dive in. Step one in the video will be the first stages in this. Now, I'm actually going to use manual tools for just putting the car together. I don't like using a power tool when you're putting the first kit together because you've got to cut all the threads. But watch on. Click on that subscribe button if you haven't. And let us know what you think to the video. So, bag. We are on bag one. Uh, I've just laid out all the parts. It looks like you get all the bearings in the whole kit in bag one. So perhaps we just make sure we don't lose any of those. When you get the moulding, sometimes you'll see there'll be a little bit of extra moulding from the sprue. You just need to break that off. So the first step is we've got our steering arm there or our steering centre um, track rod. And we then just need to push in the ball bearings into there. It's the smallest ball bearings that are in the kit. Like so. Then we have a six mil ball stud, which goes in here with one of these blue, associated blue metal washers behind it. So here's the ball stud, it's actually a slightly longer one, which goes in there, the eight mil, that, they measure the thread length, eight mil, into there. So that is the steering um, center arm. You need to make sure you get it the right way round the ball studs face that way and what you'll find if you have any leftover molding you just cut them off with a little with a knife so that is the center part done we then need to add on the bell crank arms you can get these on alloy which is a nice little upgrade actually one of them's got two holes in you have to put the shortest ball stud in this pack into there you then have these two like top hat washers which go through the bearing like so so, then from the bottom, you then screw into those holes in there like that. So we put those screws in there, make sure they're a nice um, free movement. It shouldn't be too bad because you've got a bush in there, you're not going to tight, over tighten that. Then we have to put bearings in here, it's a nice ball race steering assembly on this, so you can get this in aluminium, which will make your steering response better, maybe an upgrade we do. Then you put the longest bush, those two long bushes, in the top like that. And then the longest left screws left over in this pack go through the top like so. And then we are ready to put this in our front um, bulkhead. Make sure you get it the right way round. It goes that way up, sort of with those bits facing upwards. And these then go on to there like that. So there we are. Steering assembly done. Just make sure it feels nice and free, doesn't bind up. And that is really nice. There's no play in that. I've also put in the ball studs for the front top links. Now, when you build this car up, you've got loads of different options here on the front um, caster and kick up. Now, I'm actually going to build this up just as the kit. We'll come to setting it up um, as and when we've actually got the car completed. Now, I have got some uh, hop-ups that it came with, or that I bought with it. I've got the aluminium um, kick plate for the front, which is a must, I believe. I've also got some better shock inserts, which make them perform better. And also got the aluminium servo horn, because the plastic ones, to be fair, I wouldn't use the plastic ones on any of the kits. But we're just going to build the front up. 
without that alloy plate on to start with. And we will now come, we'll use these plastic ones. You get two different ones in a kit to give you different kick up angles. So we'll come onto that next. The bag two, starting to put some bits on the chassis now. Here is the chassis. Well, it's a masterpiece, lovely piece of uh, engineering and machining there. It's got these lovely machine slots in here. Let's put your radio gear and that in. But the first step is to mount on our previous assembly, which goes on the front like so, and then our kick-up um, plates or front bulkers. I'm just going to use the zero for the moment. I probably will change that when we start to set the car up. So it goes on there like that. And you have two 14 mil screws. Make sure you get the right length there. There are lots of similar colored, sorry, similar colored length screws. So they need to go in there like that. So we have that on. Any doubt which way it goes on, you have those little holes there, which are actually some grub screws to hold the pins in. They go that way. Now the next step is to put in the, these are some weights that go in the car. Look at them, aren't they lovely pieces of machining? Just sit in there like that. And to retain them, you use the smallest. They are absolutely tiny. Don't want to drop it on the floor. I've got a black floor and I'll never find them again. And they just go in those smallest holes there. So you have two to go in there. And you also have four to go in there. Now, I do know people sometimes don't always screw these in. They just stick them in to give the chassis a little bit more flex. Uh, if you are going to screw them in, you do need to thread lock them. Because otherwise they may come loose. Metal into metal, always thread lock. So we just put them in. I'm actually not going to thread lock them because I'm not sure if I'm going to leave them in or not as yet. So put those plates in, all screwed up. What I've also done, I've put the first of the chassis rails on. Here is the one for the other side. The only thing you need to be careful of here is the front two screws are 10 mil and the back two are eight mil. Now if you don't know, when you're measuring screws, countersunks, you measure the overall length. So that one there is a 10 mil. But then if you're measuring like a cap head, you just do the thread length. So that's a 10 mil cap head. You don't measure the overall length. So we'll just whack on the other one of those. There we go, both chassis rails on. Do check those screw lengths. I actually got one of them in the wrong length. And you'll notice on that one, you actually don't put a screw in at the moment because there's actually an option for the fan mount to go in there. But that's just one side. Now we will come on to fitting in our servo. Got a top spec Samwar servo we're gonna put in it. And we are going to use the aluminium um, servo horn on this one. I'm not going to use the plastic ones. These ones, to be fair, are rubbish. You'll just strip them out, so there's no point using them. So first things first, you've got a ring, which, no, you don't need the ring on the plastic one, do you? Of course you don't. So that just goes onto the servo like that. I've already centered this servo, and what you get with these is a little clamping screw there. So you do up that clamping screw first. You can thread lock these if you want, and I will probably thread lock the one that goes into there. So the horn is on there like that. Now you can use different horns on this. I mean, I've got I've got bags of these things in various versions, but at least when you buy the proper one, you know this distance here, which is crucial for your steering um, geometry, is going to be correct. So then we just put our ball stud in the top there, and with the proper servo horn, you know that that distance there is going to be spot on. Next up, we just need to make up our steering link. You have two of these little ball studs with a one mil um, washer in between them. So we'll just screw that onto there halfway. One mil blue, probably doesn't show up very well on my blue background here. And then you just screw them together like so. That then just pops onto your searing servo like that. Just check it's nice and free. Just makes a change. Sometimes the ball studs a little bit tight. That's lovely and free. Next, we just need to make up the servo uh, mount. Now, you do get some nice alloy posts with this, but the plastic top part. And you just have some M3 by 6s which hold this together. So. Looks like it goes on that way around. Bit of thread lock on there. I always use thread lock anything when it goes metal into metal. So now to mount our servo into its sort of cradle. On this car they give you these nice screws which have got these bigger heads on them, which I really do like that. Again, we're gonna thread lock these and then it's just four screws that go into there. So that is the servo on there. You do get, if I can find them, some little spacers, there we go, 
little spacers there if you need to space this off from here but we shouldn't need to it says you shouldn't need to and when we fit it in the car we'll show you if you do need to or not so we'll just mount this into the chassis it just goes on those holes there and of course we need to thread lock those screws that go into there so there is our chassis mounted in all popped onto the ball joints now i'm not sure if you see the slight angle on that i'm not sure whether that really does want it to be straight or not we'll have a look at that once we've done the car i want to get the car built up and see see where we're at on that so the next stage is the roll bar now you don't get this with the dirt model but the carpet model you do so the first stage is to put this little retaining uh collar on and then just use this little set screw just to clamp it up. Doesn't need to be over tight on this one, just to stop it moving. And then this sits in the front like so. And we can then put on our front upper bulkhead, which retains that roll bar like so. And then clamp that up with a couple of M3 by 14 screws into there so put this front bulkhead on you've got two 10 mil screws that go into there like so now you need to put these in first before you then put in these little grub screws or set screws depending on what you want to call them which go into there like that and what this does, this stops this anti roll bar moving up and down. But make sure you tighten down those two screws before you tighten down these set screws here. So we've got that all tightened up. When you set do these set screws, you are literally talking perhaps an eighth of a turn to get it to go. And that's possibly a fraction. Yes, it falls under its own weight. That's what you want. But you don't want it to be able to move up and down. Probably won't even run a front anti roll bar. But I'm building it up as kit just to, just to get it going. So the next thing is front arm mountings now these are marked left and right and the first thing we're going to do is in the back of them here which stops the uh, pin coming out is just put the little screw that holds that in and it's these small screws here they're slightly smaller than the other they're an m m2 by four you can see we've got that one in there and what it does it stops the hinge pin moving backwards Here's one without it in, the other one, you see it moves through there. And then it is just as simple as lining up the arm, and putting the pin through. But first you actually just need to put this on, it goes behind the front of the arm like that. So we'll put, so if you can see that metal um, brace goes behind the front of those pins and there are your wishbones mounted what you also then do is put a small set screw into there just snug that up till you start to feel it tighten up and that just stops those pins coming out and just feel are they free do they drop under their own weight yes they do so they're good then we have a front bumper to go on like so so front shock tower now in one of my other videos i show you had to seal carbon fiber uh, it doesn't say anything about uh using it on the sealing it on this one so i'm i'm, I'm not going to bother i'm not going to bother on this one so simple thing now just to get the uh shock mounted up so first of all we will put on the blue bushings 20 mil screws which go on like so. It doesn't say about using any thread lock on these, don't you need to because you can get these quite tight. Then we have a shock cap protector. Mm, not a great fan of that. I don't think it looks that great. I think it makes the car look a bit cheap. Um, but we'll put it on as it comes with the kit. So we've got our shock protector on, 7 mil spanner if you want to put on the back of them to nip them up, which you really ought to. And I've just realised, yes, a lot of indoor places, or when you're racing on carpet, they do recommend or do stipulate that you have to have a shock tower protector to stop it ripping the uh, carpet if you flip over. So make sure you get the countersunk holes on the front, and then you've got a 10 mil lower um, bolt screw 
to hold that on and then above it you have which is quite a nice little touch with this car you have the um, front uh, wing mount so you get a front wing mount with this car and a front wing which is a tuning aid to give yourself a bit more front end and that screws on there like so right guys so we're now on to bag three um, get two extra screws in there I'm not quite sure what uh, they're for but anyway Nicely with this kit, you get two sets of the front steering blocks. You get uh, threes and four mils, which is quite nice. We're actually going to just go with the three mils. That's what they recommend to use. Um, and also you've got a selection of the front insert caster blocks. I've already put the bearings on, and I've also put some of the ball studs on. The longer ones go into these yokes, and the shorter ones go onto the Ackerman plates. So the first step is to get our knuckle axle holder whatever you want to call it and then make sure I get these the right way round we then pass that through there like so and you see this is where we've got a slightly different offset I think it's a one mil offset on these which is which is different to normal and then we have a six mil screw which goes into there and you need to thread lock that so we've got that together Make sure that spins nicely. Don't be afraid to put a good amount of thread lock on there. And I've also put on the Ackerman plate. We'll show you how that goes on with this one. Make sure you get these the right way round. The flat part of the hub carrier goes towards the outside of the car. It is labelled on there if you can see L's and R's, so it's quite straightforward. When you put this on, the ball stud comes to the top. And you actually have a shorter screw, so an 8mm screw that goes into there. and a shorter screw, a six mil that goes into there. So make sure you get them correct when you are putting this part together. So the next part is to put the inserts into the caster blocks, um, yokes, whatever people might call them, I'm not sure the proper name for these parts. Um, or the associated call them, you've got a two and a half degree insert and actually what you want to do, you want to make this lay further back when the pin goes in it wants to lay further back and it has nice little locating notches there for that to go in so we put that into there and we know that that is the left one so we marry that up with the left um, block there and you have these caster blocks now it recommends putting the 2 mil in the top like so and then the one mil in the bottom this then passes into there and you then have a 14 mil in the top because you've got that longer bushing and then you have a 12 mil in the bottom if you're going to change that and have the bushings around the other way round then of course you change the the bolts so the longer bolts goes with the longer bushing so we've got those all made up and it's now a case of just fitting them into our wishbones. Just make sure you get them the right way round. And what you do first of all, the pin goes in from the back because it can't move out to the front and you actually have a little captive screw which goes in that hole there. But what you need to put in first is one of these washers. So the washer goes on and then our get it around the right way our assembly goes on like so and then you just put that screw into there like that I'm gonna do the same on the other side so we're now on bag four it's got the weight in there I suppose that's for quality control make sure you got all the parts in there and basically we are now coming on to fitting the pills into the suspension holders you've got two blocks c and d that is c that is d um why they call them c and d is because on the four-wheel drive a and b is at the front but they've just kept it like that when you've got two-wheel drive obviously you don't have any of these on the front of a two-wheel drive now you then have what they call these pill inserts which adjusts all the toe in the um uh, the kick up all those sort of things and the track width on the back I'm not going to explain all those but basically it's very well explained in various manuals. There's various um, apps out there to calculate it all, and it tells you in the manuals anyway. But we'll just go with kit set up there. So they push in there nice and tight. You can see we've got all the other ones there. You don't want to lose them. They're fiddly, but keep an eye on those. And we've got to mount this block, block C, onto the chassis. You can't get it the wrong way around. 
it won't physically go on the wrong way around. Well, okay, yeah, it will, but the screws don't, the holes don't line up. So it goes on that way. It's got two nice little mounting lugs, which go in there. And then we have these two six mil, I think they are. Yeah, six mil screws, which I've already put a bit of thread lock on, and we will put one in there and there. So they're now in there. Very important to thread lock them in there well. You don't want them coming undone. They are quite short as well. Just make sure they're properly tight. Thread lock, you also really leave thread lock 24 hours to cure properly. Now, next step is we have got to prepare the rear wishbones. These are the 73 mil versions, the kit versions. You can get slightly longer ones, which means you can address just the, the track width and the likes. And what they want you to do with these is you put the set screw in there and leave it protruding 11 mil. So you can see I've done that one, and we'll just do the same on this one. We're using the inner hole to start with. And there we go, there are two wishbones. So now we can put the rear arms onto the car. Now, yes, I've got them on the wrong way. Those going things go to the front there to mount the uh, shocks onto. So you have these little washers, which are actually on with the wishbone. So make sure you don't throw them away. Goes on there like that. And that obviously gives you the ability to adjust your wheelbase a little bit. Do the same on this side. That then goes on there like that and then the rear I've already put the pills in here talked about the pills in the previous step we've just gone for the center setup there and then you've got this little rear bumper which goes on there like so and that just fits onto the back like that now this actually screws up into the gearbox so we can't actually fix that for the moment so we just need to put this to one side and then we're going to start on the gearbox so Diff build, this is probably, along with the shocks, the one area which you're going to rebuild, tune the most in your car. So we'll run through how we how we build this diff up. I've laid out all the parts, hopefully straightforward, so you can see how it goes together. You're going to need some diff oil. It recommends 5,000, which we will use. And you also need a little bit of grease just to help the thing together. I'm going to build it up as per the manual. Just a couple of bits I like to do slightly different. First things first is you've got to seat this O-ring into your diff half so that goes in there first time i've ever built an associated diff up that moves in there very very freely i'm surprised small amount of grease on here just to help it through you could use you could use oil on there but it recommends using grease so we'll go with what they recommend turn it as you put it through i like to turn it and then on the back of it we have these little thin washers just goes on the back of the shaft like so see that's just gone on there before before I put the pins and uh, the gear on there I like to just put a small amount of oil just behind that because that way it just helps it rotate and settle a little bit better now you've got to get this pin through there now there is one of these little square grooves here is flat so in aids you being able to get the pin through there so a pair of long nose pliers so we've got that in there that goes on there really nice and easy one of these have been able to do that so you then got metal internal gears which is nice when we got the x-ray up that only had plastic internal gears so i like that and you'll feel that go home and that is in your diff. And make sure that bevel gear has gone down far enough. You can see the top of it needs to be flush with the end of your shaft. So that's that bit done. We then need to make up the, uh, what are these called? The planetary gears? I can't remember what they call them, the sun gears. There is the planet gears. So these go on quite straightforward. And again, nice, these are metal. When we built up the x-ray, that was plastic. You can get metal cross pins for here as well which is not a bad upgrade, just makes your diff stronger, and particularly if you're running modified on high grip, then the amount of power that you're putting through these is quite phenomenal, and particularly you can run two gears on these diffs, which changes the handling. So that goes in there simply like that, and just drops into our assembly, it's a little fiddly, like so. See that turn around like that. So that's one half of that done. We'll now do the same with our other side. First of all, put the washer in there. 
It recommends a small amount of grease on there. Pass that through, there's a twisting motion. A little washer on there. And again, I'm just gonna put a small amount of oil on there before I put the pin in. And you can see here, a little bit easier how this pin goes in. It just goes, pin just goes in like that. Make sure it's sort of 50-50. And then you just push on your gear and it's flush like that. And if you really want to, you can then just seat that into your diff. It's dry, of course. Just feel, it feels very bit, very dry, of course, because there's no oil in there, but it's smooth. So that's all built up okay. Now, the big thing is now filling the diff with oil. How much oil do you put in? Some people weigh it, some people do it by eye. I know X-ray manual says exactly how much to put in it. Well, easy rule of thumb, and bear in mind when you're refilling this, it's never gonna be completely empty. I do enough oil to fill the cross pins. Bear in mind, with this oil being this thick, you need to just work it in a little bit. You can see it heaped up a little bit there, and I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. And what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna leave it to settle. Just gonna leave it to settle for a few minutes, and then we'll come back to it, so we can see what level we've got. So we've let that settle. You can see that's covering those pins, covering those pins nicely there. And just need to bear that in mind, when you're filling your diff, if you fill it, obviously the fuller you fill it, the more, the heavier it will feel. So you just need to bear that in mind, but I say, just cover those cross pins. So the next thing is you need to put the little gasket over it. So there's the gasket on, and then we can just close the diff up. What I always do, just turn it, make sure it feels good. And then these four screws, just tighten them up. And you want to tighten these up in a cross pattern. And don't, oh, they need to be nice and tight, but you don't want to over tighten. If you over tighten, you'll distort the plastic and you might get leaks. And the gears may not mesh properly, so we'll just nip them up. Always feel the diff uh, action. Quite a warm day, so that oil is a bit lighter than perhaps what it'd be on a cooler day. But there is our diff done. So we're on to bag six, which is actually mainly the gearbox. But the first step is actually to put the roll bar, the rear roll bar together. So we've already just put the little grub screw into here. So we just need to do that up. Again, don't need to do it up massively tight, just so far. And then we put the ball studs on the end. They go flush with the end. So I'm just flush with that end there, and again, just do them up. We'll do the same for the other side. And the eagle eye will notice that I didn't actually finish off the front roll bar, mainly because I couldn't find the links. Well, they're not always in the right bags, or they're not always in the same bags. They're actually in the bags with the shock, so I've just found them, and they're here. So we'll do that at a later stage. But we also have to make up the links for the rear roll bar, and basically you have a 10 mil set screw, or grub screw, whichever you want to call it. Put that into that first little ball joint socket and make up the second one. And you need to leave between these two um, ball studs a two mil gap. So we'll just measure that off and then that one is done. Pop them onto there, like so. Same with the other side. And that's ready to go on the car. So we're now getting towards the bowels of the truck. Truck buggy whatever you want to call it so here we go we've got the gearbox halves here now i've also got the um rear top link mount i've already just put the ball studs in and you put two of the two mil washers on there and also when we put it together it's got the smallest i think it's an m2 is it m2.5 um screw that goes in there so it's the smallest one in the pack when you get to this point so pretty straightforward putting the gearbox together get your bearings bearing on there that then goes on there like that we then have a bearing oh, bearing on this center gear each side I always like to put the metal shield to the outside because I think that's got gives it the most protection shaft goes in there like that that then sits on there put that last bearing on there 
then our two halves go together like that. Let it spin freely, yes. We haven't been told to put any gearbox lubricant in there. Um, I will perhaps put some in there in a minute, but probably when we put the diff on is when we'll need to do that. Then we have two 16mm screws that go through there and there. Check that all feels good, all fine. And then it then says put your roll bar on there. And then you mount in the top link mount like so. And then just nip that screw up into there. You can see it. Right, so here we are getting the last parts of the gearbox together. With this, you get these diff inserts, which is just the height of the diff in the gearbox. So you need to make sure you have the same one on each side and the same orientation. It recommends, from according to the manual, having three... I don't know if you can see the number three, probably not. Number three on there actually puts the diff high. I'd have thought we'd had the diff low, but hey ho, let's try it. So it just slots into there like so. I've already pre-lubed it up a little bit, the gearbox. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on here. Just to help that, quieten that gearbox down. That'll work its way through there. And then Mustn't forget to put our roll bar back in, which we made up in an earlier step. And then the diff half just clips on, get it right way around, like so. And then we have, we have two 16 mil bolts that go through the back and two 10 mils that go through the front there and there. There we have it. As I like to do at all stages, just feel, is that free? Yes, that's all good. And the last step here is we need to put these two little set screws into here. And what that does is that just takes up that slack. See that slack there on that roll bar. So they don't want to be clamping it. They just want to take up that slack. The one in the other side. And we'll tighten them down. So just like that, just take up that slack and then that is that bit done. So the last couple of steps is we need to put the waterfall in. It goes in there. Now there's two with the kit. I think it's the shorter one we put on. I'm not sure it doesn't actually say. We'll see. Soon enough it's wrong or not when it doesn't fit on the chassis. We've got a 16mm bolt that goes through the waterfall ball joint, which we just popped in there. Just tying it up. And then the last one is we have a 20mm bolt which goes through in there. And we'll just tighten those up. So there we go, just make sure that waterfall is nice and floppy, just so it doesn't, uh... and that is the wrong one, isn't it? Never gonna get a motor in there, are you? Need to put this one on, don't we? There we go, that's better. I assume it's the right one. Find out in a minute, easy enough to change over. Just watch that ball joint in there. Make sure it's nice and free, roll bar's floppy. That's floppy, it's all moving about nicely. Last step for this part is we need to put on our motor plate. Now, it has a little guard there for the spur, and it then just fits onto there with three, what are they? They are 10 mil screws. No need to thread lock these because we're going into plastic. So we have one there, one there, and then one into there. There we go, motor plate on, nice and rigid. And on to the next stage, which is the slipper assembly. Right, so here we have the slipper assembly. You actually also get with this a 72 spur gear, which is more for stock racing. We're going to be doing modified racing, so we will go with the standard, what is it, a 70, 78 spur. So first job, we've already done it, is actually to put, there's a roll pin. I don't know if you can see that. There's a roll pin in there. You have to put that in there. It's a little bit fiddly, but just take your time doing that. And then that then sits in this slipper. You can't get these slippers the wrong way around. You see it slips, sits in that recess there. So you then have one of these slipper pads. In fact, I'm going to put it inside the spur gear first. Like that. Pass that through there. We then have another slipper pad to go on the back of it. Like so let's put it the other way around so it's dished that way makes it easy to get it together another slipper pad should go on there like so 
Then this passes all the way through this part of the gearbox, like so. Then you have some spacers. Now this spacer, it has a smaller and a larger diameter shoulder. You put the smaller one on there, then the spring goes on there because it sits on that shoulder. And then you have another washer. This time it's got a flat top to it, which goes on like that. Washer on there. And then just tighten up your slipper. We aren't going to set the slipper as yet. We'll just tighten up so it doesn't fall to bits. And that is our slipper assembly done. That's gone together really well. I was actually surprised. I thought it might be a bit more fiddly than what it is. But that is that done. Right, so rear shock tower assembly. First thing is to put on these chassis not chassis these shock cap protectors again i think as i said earlier, i'm not a massive fan of them but we'll put them on see what uh how they look i think they look a bit ready to run thing but hey ho they're in the kit let's stick them on so put the two what are they 22 mil bolts through there tighten that up you want to tighten these down nicely, which you really should. They're a 7mm, 7mm washer, sorry, 7mm nut. Tighten that off there nicely so they don't come undone. Yes, I know you should always turn a nut onto a thread rather than the other way around, but it works better, doesn't it, that way. Then you need to put your actual wing mount on. You get these spacers, so you can space it off a little bit. Um, it does say um, you don't have to, but I will space them off like that. Then we use these long screws here to do that. Same on the other side. Go, there's our tower. Then we just need to mount it to our gearbox assembly. So it goes on there like that with four, what are they, 12 mil I think? Yeah, 12 mil screws, one there, one there. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's not very good design as you've got one down there which is difficult to get to oh well we'll get to that in a sec so wound them into there actually fact that one's not difficult to get to you can see that does go in there quite easily so just tighten them up and that's that bit done right so there is our shot tower back on or on the, on the gearbox assembly and now we're going to put it on the chassis if you can remember this bit here was loose so yes when i moved the chassis now i did just ping that off so be a bit careful when you're putting that together but it does just sit on like so and you've got two longer screws that go in the back here these 16 mil and then you've got six longer shorter ones that go there there and there so i'm just going to try and get these on without destroying all this back bit when it falls into bits There we go, we can just get them in there first, I think. And then we have one there, one there, and then one there. No, sorry, these front ones here for the waterfall there and there. There we go. I told you wrong, it's not those two there. It's those two there it goes into. So that is the gearbox on there. Pretty rigid. So here is a rear axle assembly which we've already made up. Uh, exactly the same both sides, so we'll show you how to do it. First thing is first, you need to put on the top link mounts, two 12mm screws, then a 2mm washer on there, on there. I haven't, but I will put some thread lock on them. Just tighten them up like so. You see that's handed, it's got the slight bulbous bit towards what will be the inside of the car. So that does up like that. And like that. You then have, there's only one size of ball stud in this pack. Goes on there like that. And again, a little bit of thread lock on there. That goes in there far too easy by hand. So you want to put a bit of thread lock on there, which I will do off camera. Ball bearings, smaller one on the outside, bigger one on the inside. That is almost the uh, axle done. You then have these uh, inserts. It adjusts the height of this axle in relation to the um, wishbone and you get various ones it tells you in the manual there's plus zero one two three and it recommends to go three up so you can see the numbers on there three up so we will put that in here like so it just slides in. you can only go in one way then 
we come on to our drive shaft assembly. Now, these to me, these pins look much thinner than some of the other ones I've seen, but will remain to be seen. I do like the way the axle's been designed to, to locate into the bearing, that's very nice. But to put this together, first of all, I just put a small amount of the black grease on that to help to lubricate it inside this. Not a lot, because if you put too much in, it will attract loads of dirt. Then you'll see you've got two sets of holes in here, it just means you can get double the life out of these, so when one set wears, you can then put them in the other set. And then you've got this little um, pin, which goes through there. So that is drive shaft done. And this, to stop this pin coming out, it's encapsulated by this big bearing here. So that pushes all the way through. And then the last step is to put the outer drive uh, pin. Then you put on the blue hex. Make sure that's pushed tight onto there. And then you have the tiniest of little clamp screws, which goes onto there. And then with a, a one and a half mil hex, that just does up. So here's our rear assembly. They are exactly the same both sides. So just need to use these captive pins, which have got a head on them. And then a nut goes on the other side. So, and you've got these a black washer, which adjusts your wheelbase. So you put one on there, slide in your hub assembly. See there, perhaps a little bit better. Put the other one in there. Then, just make sure that locates properly. like so nut on there and then just snug that up and do the same on the other side right guys so we're on to the shock absorbers now we've just got one laid out here you see i've said earlier we have actually got some upgraded um shock um spacer shim things which are meant to be much better we'll show you how they go in the set you've got a couple of different options here first things first is to put the piston on. Now it recommends just to go over the numbers on there with a marker pen so you can see what size pistons you got in there. And unfortunately it only gives you one set which is a bit of a bit of a disappointment. A lot of other sets you do get more pistons with it but we're going to build it up a stock, see how it goes. I know there are some changes we want to do on that. I wonder if it doesn't say thread lock in the um, this little uh, bolt here but if it says we won't, we won't then. So we'll see how that goes. Next we need to put together the um, shock seal. Um, first thing I'm going to put is the black seal all the way over there, which seals that onto there. Now, I use, they, you, you meant to seal these with something. I use the associated green slime. It's the best thing you can use for putting in these seals. So this top hat seal we're not going to use. We've got the machined one to go in there. It's actually a thin one. Then we've got a, a uh, uh, o-ring which we'll just put a little bit of this on it so that seals nicely into there we then put a thick shimmed washer on push that down make sure that's all nicely in there we then put another uh, washer on or oh, sorry o-ring not washers either o-rings don't be afraid to use too much uh, grease on there. Then we use the other top hat washer. And then finally, we screw on the blue retaining collar. It's going to be tucked up uh, hand tight. It doesn't need to be any tighter than that. And that's all good. Well, you can see that in the manual there, it actually says to use the green slime. So obviously it's a good thing to use, recommended. Obviously Associated are going to recommend it's their own product. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pass the shock shaft through the seals. Now this at this point is where you potentially can cause damage to your shock seals. So we'll put some oil on the shaft as well. And then as we put it through here, what I always like to do is once you get it in there, just try and turn it. Rather than pushing it through, just turn it so it 
doesn't tear those seals so we've got the little bit of grease come off there and there we go to adjust the setups you can put spaces inside here and that but we don't need to do that just for stock setup so before we fill these shocks we have to put on our shock eyelets get three different lengths with this car which is quite nice changes the uh, handling of the shocks we're going to put the middle one on which is a plus two just thread that onto there now I've got a pair of shock pliers so they grip see the soft part of the shock ply it grips the shock shaft so there's no chance of damaging it just do that up till we lose all the thread you can then measure this distance the manual gives you a distance there that it should be and the front should be 21 mil so we're a little bit short sorry a little bit long so we just tighten it up so we get to 21 there we go not going to worry about less than 0.1 of a mil there we go there is our shock built up now we are going to use a shock stand this is a car stand it's got holes to put your shocks in and we're going to fill up the shocks with oil now so i'm going to use the standard 35 weight oil just so i know where we're at i'm going to fill it up as per the manual it's about three quarters of the way i don't know if you can see i'm going to move it up and down a little see those air bubbles they should then pop out it's a very warm day here today so it affects the oil, the oil is slightly lighter. Topped it up to the top. And what I'm going to do now is just leave that for a few minutes for those air bubbles to naturally just rise to the top and come out of the shock. So we'll leave that in there. What I would normally do, I'd normally do all four so they can all be done together, but we only need to show you one on the camera. Okay, guys, so we have let this settle and all the air's come out of it now. I'm just going to top it up a fraction. Just so it is, oh, that's a little bit too full. Oh well, that'll bleed out in a minute. We've got an O-ring which needs to go over the top here. Should have done that before I put the oil in, but we forgot. Then we have the shock cap to go on. Just screws on like that. Make sure you don't get it cross-threaded. Usually just a few turns in the opposite direction. Starts it off nicely. There we go, and then what we have to do, if you can see that hole there, as I push the piston, as I push the piston up, oil comes out of it, which you just need to wipe away. And when it's all the way up to the top, when the piston's all the way up to the top, you put in this retaining screw, like so. And that is the bleed process done. I'm just going to clean this up with a little bit of brake cleaner. And there is one shock build up. The next thing we need to do, don't need that stand anymore, is put the threaded adjuster on. You get a O-ring, which goes inside a little recess. So that should just tuck in there. So once you've got that O-ring on there, it then just says put a small amount of oil on there. Wipe it around with your finger. And it just eases it and lubricates it onto there. I always do a couple of turns anti-clockwise before I then can feel it go on. It should go on nice and smoothly and then you can wind that to wherever you want your preload. Obviously you need to make sure that both of these are the same or they're the same each side but that's obviously part of the setup for the car. Then put our spring on and we actually have three different sizes of collars. It basically affects the droop on the car it affects these three collars. So then we put the shock collar on at the bottom. There's three of them, and it affects the amount of droop that you have on the car and some of the other handling characteristics. So in this instance, we're putting the five mil on the front, which is the kit setup, and on the back it's the rear. And that is our shock done. The last step, put the ball or the rose joint actually as it is on the front. I have shock pliers, brilliant investment shock pliers. They have these little uh, recess there which helps you put a ball joint in properly without damaging it clicks in like that and that is our shocks done and here are all four of them done
And do you know what? They feel really good. Really impressed with them. They're probably some of the best shocks I've felt. They feel really nice. Let's get them on the car. So now we just need to mount these on the car. Front's quite straightforward. Just goes into the front groove there. And then onto the... In fact, we'll do the top first. And then it just goes on there. It says mount it to the outside hole. And then you just use a 20 mil, yep, 20 mil bolt that goes through there, and then a nylock nut on the top. The back, almost the same. It says that you need to put the flange of the um, shot, which is that bit to the rear of the car, so it goes on there like that. Remember, we installed those set screws, if you can see that there. So it then goes on there, on there, and then you have a nut, top and bottom. We then just need to do the other side. And there we have the shocks on the car. All nicely mounted on the car and we've just got a couple of finishing touches to do i'm not sure if i'll show you putting the electrics in or we'll just show you the end result but we've got a couple of few bits to do battery tray and things to just put in next so bag 10 just a few of the finishing touches first things first we've got fan we will put a fan on this car um got three or four different ways four different options the way you mount your fan just so i've got the parts on the car i'm going to put option one on there like that and then an 8mm screw goes in the bottom there. So the battery mount, how do we fit that in? Okay, so we have these shoulder strap screws which go in, thread on, put them in, where should we put them in? Let's put them in the front mount. We've got two different options by the looks of it. So I've put in the, uh, the what are they called? shoulder straps whatever they are to take the lipo need to finish level with the top of the lipo the next part is on your battery tray you've got these little retaining uh, lugs which go on there like that then you've got these black washers which go on there and then a six mil yes six mil screw goes on there like so one that side and then one on that side so we'll just make sure that our lipo battery sits snugly in there it does because obviously that's how it's going to retain it put our lipo in got it mounted far forward there that helps you have it the same holes each side doesn't it like so then you have these thumb screws because I'm running low profile lipos. We've got quite a bit of thread here, so we may look to cut that down or do something different. I'm not sure. Obviously, it depends what weight we've got because it might be we need to put a uh, lipo weight under there, a bit more weight in the car. But I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Lipo in. Let's stick a motor in it as well so it looks like it's almost ready to run so we're nearly there just need to put a speedo in do a bit of wiring i'm actually going to chuck some wheels on it now i think make it look a bit better so let's just chuck some wheels on it wheels it has tires and wheels on it now so all intents and purposes that is the car done yeah and i've got to put a speedo a few other bits and bobs got to set the cams and everything up but it's done we started this morning finished it in the day easily and that's we're meant to be doing proper work as well Things I like about the car, well, the diff feels very nice. Shocks are some of the best I've found. They feel a bit over damped, but again, we're not worrying about the setup on this truck or this car at the moment, like the alloy um, servo mounts. It'd be nice if it came with an alloy um, servo horn as standard, but because there's so many different teeth, that obviously add quite a bit to the cost to get everything you needed. Um, the only thing I would be nice to have was some of the pistons for the shocks. You don't get any spare pistons for the shocks. You get other tuning aids, all the pill inserts to just the... Um, front caster and rake you also get the inserts for the front um, hubs there 
and also you get another set of front hub carriers which is which is nice so that's that's good but we will get the electrics in it and give it a spin see how it goes mm -hmm. 